Well, good morning. Welcome to the branch. We're glad you're with us. If you're visiting with us, we have cards out in the breezeway you can grab and fill out. I uh, would love, and if you have a prayer request too, you can fill it out and put it in the box, and our prayer team would love to pray for you. Um, this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock here, we are going to have Officer Chip Watts from Ashland Police Department come to do a safety presentation for us. So if you are available, if you're a Branch Kids volunteer, we really like you f to be here, um, safety team members as well. Um, so we'd love for you to be a part. Um, also, this coming Saturday, we're partnering with Restoration Church. They're hosting a Ready to Share seminar, talking about how we can communicate the, the grace of Jesus to other people. And so um, there's an online sign up for that. And if you did not receive that, let me know, and I can make sure that you get that. Um, sometime in September, we're going to be starting a, a book study. We've done some book studies in the past with a few books. Uh, there's a book called Liturgy of the Ordinary that we're going to be going through. We'll probably meet once a month uh, just to talk about some of what we've read. So if you're interested in that, again, please let me know. And also, we have an opportunity. We, last week, we started talking about surrender and sacrifice, talking about our time. This week, we're talking about our talents. Um, we have an opportunity for those of you who have not already signed up and let us know your availability for uh, Branch Kids. Um, we would love for you to be able to invest in the next generation of kids here uh, on Sunday mornings. Um, our on Family Sunday, we don't have Branch Kids, but for the other... Sundays of the month um, would love for you to be part of that. You can see uh, some of the needs here. Uh, Beverly was gracious enough to have put this together for me, um, just showing where some of those needs are. And so um, usually we have two adults in there, so you don't have to feel like you need to have all the answers and make sure that you have the, the lesson all perfect. Um, sometimes, to be honest with you, just like Sunday mornings, it's it's about showing up. And so um, if you are interested, please let me know. Um, and if I don't hear anything from you, uh, you may be approached by me. So just as a forewarning, <coughs> why don't we stand as we read our call to worship together. In Philippians 2, 3, and 4, Paul wrote this. And let's read this together. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. i 
Go ahead and have a seat. Kids, can you dismiss the branch kid? Gallup defines a talent as any naturally recurring pattern of thought, feeling, or behavior that consistently produces a positive result. result. And talents are the raw material of strengths, and we all have them. The challenge, I think, for us when we consider our strengths, when we consider our talents, is twofold. First of all, when we know something's a talent or a strength, we can easily rely on it and forget that it's a gift of God, that God was the one who gave it to us to begin with. I think also we can struggle with the fact that we are normally trained and conditioned that if something is a talent, then you use it for your own good. Um, I'm going to use my strengths uh, to get ahead and for my own sake. Rather than saying, how can I take this talent or this strength that God's given me and turn it around and use it for the good of somebody else? How can I use it for the glory of God as well? You know, the passage that we read earlier together uh, that Paul wrote in Philippians 2 verses 3 and 4, he said this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Boy, that's a great election uh, verse, right, too, as we go into this election season. We're, we're looking at what it means in these few weeks of what it means for us to surrender in the sacrifice. Last week, we looked at the idea of time and how are we surrendering and sacrificing our time, and today we consider our talents, we consider our strengths. How are we surrendering and sacrificing the talents that God has given us? So when you think about the talents that God has given you, what, what do you think about them? Some of us might say, well, I don't feel like I'm very talented at all. That's not true. You have talents. Um, it's just a question of what we think about them. Are, do you think about your talents and say, hey, how can I use these for the sake of other people? How can I use these to change the world? Do I think, how can I use these to make lots of money? To help other people, all of the above, none of the above? You know, Paul didn't just write there in, a, in Philippians to talk about what we do with our gifts. In Ephesians chapter 4 he had more words for God's people in terms of what they're to do with the gifts that God has given them. And he said this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. God gave each and every one of us gifts, not to advance ourselves, but like Paul says, but to equip his people for works of service, to build up the body of Christ. <clears throat> God's given us talents to use with one another so we might experience unity and become mature. Peter in writing to the early church, <clears throat> in 1 Peter chapter 4, tells us more about what we're to do with the talents and gifts that God has given us. This is what Peter write, wrote. The end of all things is near, therefore be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. 
offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. I should have underlined that one for my sake at least. But each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. So that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. In the midst of the struggle, Peter writing this letter to a church that's struggling because it was a countercultural movement. And they were being persecuted by people outside the church. And when we are persecuted, when difficult things happen, we have a tendency to to look inward and say, well, oh, woe is me. Look at at what's happening to me. And Peter's reminding them of the importance of how they're acting with one another and how they're using their gifts for the sake of other people. People, we're to love each other deeply, Peter says, because love covers over a multitude of sins. How do we love each other deeply? And Peter says we show hospitality to one another. We use our talents and gifts, the talents and gifts that God has given to us for the sake of those around us. So what does it look like to put the interests of others above our own and to show hospitality to one another? Again, I think culturally in in our society, we're taught, identify your gifts so that you can get ahead in life. But Peter's telling us different. Paul's telling us different and saying, identify your gifts so you know what God has given you to use for other people. That you can turn it around. The word that uh, has been used even in some of my strength conversations is the the idea of being generative. That when we use our gifts and talents for the sake of other people, that we're being generative, that something is being generated in them as we do that. Instead of seeking to advance ourselves, we seek the betterment of other people. Now, as if that alone wasn't challenging, right? What does Peter say here? He says, do it without grumbling. Yeah, I guarantee you every version of the Bible that I have probably has that highlighted for my own sake. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm doing a good deed, my tendency is to go like this. Or to be like, again? Really? Didn't I just help you last week? But Peter's telling us, no. Don't do this patting yourself on the back. Don't do this bringing attention to yourself. Do this without grumbling, without complaining. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but how many of us do this well or not? Sometimes we want to show hospitality, and other times we don't. And those times that we don't, not only are we struggling to do it, but we're struggling to do it without grumbling or complaining. At least, I hope I'm not the only one who's in that boat. (laughs) You see, if God has given us a talent for something We've got to ask ourselves, how willing are we to use it in love and to use it without grumbling? Again, I'm showing my cards, trying to be as authentic as I can be when I say that oftentimes I find myself asking the question, what's in it for me? Especially when it comes to serving other people. I say, what am I going to get out of this? Like, what's behind this? How is this going to help me? In certain settings, circumstances, and relationships, that's where I go. Because I'm selfish. Because I grumble. Especially when I feel like I'm expending energy and gifts and talents, and I'm not seeing any return on that expenditure. 
then I start going, yeah, oh, look, God, look at what I'm doing for you. I mean, last week we talked about Mary and Martha, right? And Mary's going, or Martha's going, hey, look at what I'm doing for you. Tell, me, tell my sister to do the same thing. And Jesus is like, no, you've got it wrong. She's doing the right thing and you're not. And when it comes to our talents, I feel like I do the same thing at times. That I'm looking for the return instead of saying, God, you've given me these things. I need to give them to someone else and I need to do it without grumbling or complaining. Whenever we talk about giving in whatever form that might be, if it's our time, if it's our talents, if our treasure... We're talking about the idea of stewardship. In general, stewardship is caring for something that is someone else's and taking care of it. If somebody is a steward of something, it means someone else has given them something and they're tasked with taking care of it. And my mama always taught me, you know, if somebody loans you something, when you return it, return it as good, if not better shape, than how you received it. You know, don't let someone loan you something and you give it back to them broken and nasty. When it comes to stewardship, how are we stewarding what God's given us? And taking stewardship a step further, I'd say that biblical stewardship is this. An online source gave me this definition. Utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of His creation. So take a step back and ask yourself, from a biblical stewardship standpoint, how am I taking the talents and gifts that God has given me and using them for the glory of God and the betterment of His creation? I think sometimes the church has, has failed because the moment that we talk about stewardship, Everyone's bracing themselves for a talk about money. That's next week. But they fail to remember that stewardship is not just money. It's everything. If God has given us everything, He's not just given us our money. He's given us our time which is a resource. He's given us our talents, which is a resource. He's given us our treasures as well, and we're called to give them back. If everything that we have, everything we own, and everything we are has been given by God and belongs to God, that means more than just our money. The thing is, Jesus knew that where our money is, there our heart is also. He knew that uh, if you look at a person's checkbook and you see where they're spending their money, you also know where their hearts are. Same can be said about our calendars, right? Our time and our treasures. But there's not as easily of a measurable thing for us when it comes to our talents, this passage, Peter says, we use the gifts and talents we've been given to serve others. And he uses that phrase as faithful stewards of God's grace. When we serve others with our talents, we steward God's grace to them. Think about that for a second. Because that worked me over a little bit this week. <clears throat> when I think about the fact that if I am using my talents and abilities not for my own sake, but for the sake of other people, then I am a steward of God's grace to other people. God's given me an opportunity. He's given me a gift, and then he gives me an opportunity and says, you get to be a steward of my grace by taking the gifts and talents and abilities and strengths that I've given you and giving it to someone else. If we go back to the original Greek in which Peter wrote, That word gift is the Greek word charisma. Does it sound like anything you've ever heard before? It's a compound word like many Greek words too. It's made of the word charis, which means grace. Really what it means is the gift of divine grace. And Peter is saying 
you have been given the gift of divine grace not to keep to yourself. You've been given the gift of divine grace to give to somebody else, to give out, to share it with others. My question for me, for all of us, is are we stewarding that well? Are we stewarding well that divine grace that's been given to us through the gifts, through the talents that he's given to us? You know, back to my selfish question, what's in it for me? I think the better question that we might ask when we talk about surrendering and sacrificing our talents for the sake of others might be, who benefits from our surrendering and sacrificing our talents? When's the last time that you thought, I'm going to serve, who is going to be the beneficiary of my serving? You know, that, I think the answer to that question, if we do it the way that Peter and Paul recommend that we do it, should be threefold. The first person that benefits when we surrender and sacrifice our talents and abilities should be the person whom we're serving, right? <clears throat> now, a caveat, a word of warning to us That just because we know we're surrendering and sacrificing something for somebody else doesn't mean that they get it. Doesn't mean that they're appreciative of it. Doesn't mean that they even notice. But that's not what Peter and Paul are telling us here. They're not saying, hey, serve so that somebody sees what a good job you're doing. They're saying, serve because you're doing it to them. You're a a steward of God's grace, and he gets the glory. I I don't know about you, but it's a hard thing to serve when people don't recognize it. I remember early on when I was in my 20s, I had a friend who was a pastor, and He talked about how in a a big church where we were at the time, he he wasn't looking for the people who would come forward and say, I'll serve. He he was looking for the people who were doing it. And he wasn't looking for the ones who were doing it in like big showy ways. He was looking for the ones who were stacking chairs and cleaning toilets. Like the ones who didn't wait for recognition. Recognition. The ones who are just saying, hey, you know, I did this, so what? And I've struggled with that for years. Having to remind myself, charisma. Am I serving because I want the attention, because I want the acknowledgement, or am I serving because God has given me a, a gift to give to other people, and I want him to receive the glory. I don't think that we get this right, and then we just kind of coast it out. I mean, if you do, let me know your secret. I mean, just like Jesus said, you know, that we need to take up our cross daily, I think we have to do this daily. We have to, like, realign ourselves back to a motivation of stewarding God's grace. And so when we surrender and sacrifice our talents, somebody else benefits. But we benefit as well. Talk to anybody who goes on a mission trip or serves in a soup kitchen, who serves anywhere. And they will tell you. I mean, I don't know how many times I've heard this. Like, I feel like I got more out of it than than I gave. If you haven't said it, you've probably heard somebody who has. Surrendering and sacrifice, sacrificing our talents benefits us. According to an online article published by the West Coast Recovery Center, when we serve others, we experience the following. We experience stress reduction. We experience increased sense of community and belonging. We experience increased optimism. I could use that. Um, We experience a new sense of perspective, and we experience increased happiness. 
Now, hear me. If we're serving because we want those things, uh uh-uh. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. Those are secondary benefits. So don't say, oh man, I could really use that in my life right now, so I'm going to go out and serve. No. Yes, will you receive those? Yes, but that should not be our intention there. When we surrender and sacrifice for the sake of others, we get an increased benefit. But again, I think we've been conditioned to say, what is this going to cost me? If you're a parent, you ask that question a lot. What will this cost me? But do we consider what we gain when we serve? Do we consider what it is when we surrender and sacrifice our talents to God? Do we understand what we're getting back in that? Have we considered what somebody else might get out of it too? Doesn't matter whether they say thank you. Doesn't matter whether they fully appreciate it or not. The question is, do we see that measure of grace that is traveling through us? You know, when people use their gifts to to lead worship, Do they understand that God is using the talents and gifts of their voice or their hands to help somebody else experience the grace of Jesus Christ? When someone greets somebody else, when they walk through the doors of the branch, and they're using that gift of hospitality and positivity and other things, do they understand that they are stewarding God's grace to somebody else? And somebody else is benefiting. When we have teachers and people investing in the next generation and branch kids and pouring out into them, do they realize that they are conduits of God's grace and that God is allowing them to take the gifts that He's given them and stewarding His grace through them to those else? What gifts has God given you that he's saying surrender and sacrifice that you might be a steward of my grace so the people that we surrender and sacrifice our talents for they're beneficiaries and and we can be beneficiaries as well but there's a third beneficiary although he doesn't need it it's God Because ultimately, we serve and we sacrifice, not for our sake, not even for the sake of others. We do it for the sake of the Lord, who's the one who's given us those gifts. Peter says in this passage in verse 11, If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves... They should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. When we surrender and sacrifice the talents God has given us, He provides us with the strength to do what we do. And then He can receive the glory for this. We don't serve with our talents for our own glory, but for the glory of God, that He may be praised. Again, that doesn't mean that some people won't thank you or praise you for serving, but if that's our motivation, then we've got it wrong. We're doing it for the wrong reason. Can you imagine what it would look like if the church of Jesus Christ, the hands and feet of Jesus, was to go around using their talents and abilities, not so they could promote their own brand, but so that they could say, hey, let God get the glory for this. I've used that clip from the movie Miracle about the USA hockey team multiple times, and I'm always reminded of the coach telling them, the name on the front of your jersey is far more significant than the one on the back. It says Gibson on the back of my jersey, but the front better say, child of God, 
Better say body of Christ. And that's far more important than the Gibson on the back. What would it look like if the church of Jesus Christ, not just the branch, but all of us who are expressions of the body of Christ, were to begin to go out and say, I'm doing this not so I can feel good about myself, not so I can feel good, not so you can feel good, but so that God can get glory. I mean, we're getting ready to hit a rough couple of months, I can assure you. I've been bracing myself for months for what's going to happen until the end of 2024. What would happen if the church of Jesus Christ and all of the members of the body of Christ were to say, God's given me talents and abilities, and I'm going to, I have the opportunity, I have the privilege of being a conduit of the grace of Jesus Christ to people who may not like it, who may not appreciate it, who may even curse me for doing it. We're not doing it for them. We're doing it for him. God would get get the glory. And so where do we start with all this? You know, when I'm finishing up at, at First Baptist tonight, I've been working with a team up there of people leading them through strengths. And one of the first things that we say is identify and understand your talents. So don't sit there and go, well, I'm not talented. I don't have anything good to give. I can't say that, well, no kids are in here. I could say it, but I wouldn't be looked favorably upon if I did. Identify and understand your talents. What are they? And what could they be used for in serving others? How can you identify them? Hey, if, if you don't, And if you really legitimately are saying, I just don't know what I'm good at, let's have a conversation. I spent hours with people talking about that very thing. And I would be glad to do it. Because you are valuable. (laughs) And God has given you abilities and strengths to use for His glory. So let's talk about it. And then once you identify and understand, then find your place. This, there are many frustrating things to me in life, but one of the most frustrating things to me is to see someone who has a talent and ability and that they're just squandering it. That they're not using it. Oh, hey, look what I've got. And they just kind of quietly put it in their back pocket again and go about life. That's not what we're called to do. So identify, understand your talents, find your place, and then finally, give God the glory. The song, oh gosh, my dad still haunts me, right? Like with all these songs that I learned in church as a kid. Now I'm dating myself, but it's this song, um, it must have been Arky Arky, right? Like give God the glory, glory. The, I, I'm hearing these camp like VBS songs and stuff, but there was a song talking about like give God the glory, glory. And I'm like, that's all I hear when I hear that phrase. But serving the Lord isn't about going, look what I did. Hey, hey, everybody, look, look what I did. It's about getting out of the way and saying, look, you know, John the Baptist got it right. He said, there's less of me, more of him. Are we giving God the glory? Identify, find your place, and then give him the glory and surrender and sacrifice the talents and abilities that he has given you, not for your sake, not even for the sake of others, but for his sake. How will we do that? How will we do that as individuals? How will we do that as a community? How will we do that in the world? Not to promote the branch. Not even to promote the church. Just to promote Jesus. Let me pray for us. Father, I confess that I have not always stewarded your grace well. I'm selfish. I'm self centered. I can be lazy. 
and just be downright disobedient. And yet, God, you continue to give even though, and even in spite of who I am. Father, would you remind us every day that you've given us gifts, that you've given us abilities and strengths, and then would you remind us to use them, not for self-promotion, but to promote you. And so, God, we thank you for the gifts that you've given us. We thank you that you've given us the opportunity to be stewards of your grace. So, Father, may we be obedient stewards of that grace. In Jesus' name. we consider giving back to God in the form of something more tangible, our treasures, we partner with him, knowing that he's given us everything, time, talents, treasures. So in this time, as we sing this song about our need for him, consider that. Not just our treasures, but our time and our talents as well. How are we surrendering and sacrificing those things as we proclaim our need for the one who's given us all that we need?
Go ahead and have a seat for a second. I'm going to ask Taryn and Sam to come up. Um, yeah. And as most of you know, I think um, this is their last Sunday with us. And, you know, even as I think through what I just talked about, um, so much of what Sam and Taryn did around the branch were things that people didn't see. There was no, hey, you know, pat me on the back. There was no, hey, everybody look. And we had conversations about that. I know where their heart has been tutoring, pouring into kids branch kids, all these places that some of you probably don't even know. And I know that God has a plan. We don't always know what it is. That's, faith isn't knowing the plan all the time. Faith is knowing the one who holds the plan, right? And so we thank you, first and foremost, for pouring in in ways that were both seen and unseen. Thank you for showing your heart for Jesus and for the kingdom of God. And thank you for making yourselves available. Because again, I think what we just talked about, you both have exemplified well to take what God has given you and, and that's why we're even at this point, is to say, God, you've given us talents, and we want to know how best to use them. And so that's my prayer for you. I hope that you will echo that prayer as well, because God has great plans. God, we've sang that before. And so we send them off knowing that God is going to use them in a mighty way. We might not know that today or tomorrow or next week, but we know that God is going to use them in mighty ways. So let me pray for Sam and Taryn. Father, we are, are humbled at the fact that you take us and you use us for your glory for your kingdom's sake, that you saw fit to create us in your image, to pour gifts and talents and abilities into us, and then to say, go ahead, <laughs> have at it. God, thank you for Sam and Taryn. Thank you for the example that they have been. Thank you for the ways that they have done just that. They have used their abilities and talents and strengths to serve you, to serve this community. And Father, I pray that in the days ahead, 
You would be all the things that we proclaim you to be in your word. You would be the provider. You would be the comforter. You would be the one who gives wisdom. You would be the one who gives strength. Father, direct them. Order their steps, we pray. And God, just surround them. And Father, even more than that, we pray that you would continue to build them up. Not just as individuals, build them up as the one couple that they are. And build them up for what you have in store for them. Whatever whatever that looks like. Be with Taryn in her role in Starbucks. God, use her, I pray. I thank you even hearing secondhand the conversations that I know she has with workers, with those who, who visit the store. I pray that you would use her. And for Sam, God, do the same. And God, we thank you for that. And so God, we ask your blessing upon them. Thank you and bless them, God, for what they have given. And use them in a mighty way, in a way that only the mighty God who created us could use. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope uh, you all have had a, a chance to um, to just express your gratitude to them in words. I, if you don't get a chance today, I'll make sure that um, whatever uh, God's given you to share with them, that they will hear that. Um, yeah, the beauty of the body of Christ and yet the pain of the body of Christ is that like we're, there's hellos, there's goodbyes, there's all kinds of things. One of the things that I say, I can't wait till we get face to face with Jesus because there's no more of that, right? In the meantime, God has given us talents, He's given us strengths, He's given us abilities. How can we take those things and use them for His glory? He will never ask us to do anything that He hasn't equipped us to do. The writer of the Hebrews said he equips us with every good thing to accomplish his will. And so as we go off into the world, remember we don't go empty-handed and we don't go alone. We go with the authority of God the Father. We go with the power of God the Holy Spirit. And we go in the name of God the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.